Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and today we're going to be giving you a competitive comparison between the Kubota M7060 and the John Deere 5065E. We're down here at the co-op today, so first thing we'll do is weigh these two machines. If you'll stick with us, we'll get started. All right, guys, so we're here at the scales. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to weigh these two machines. We're gonna start with this Kubota M7060. This is Kubota's 71 horsepower utility tractor. And the reason we're gonna start with the weight is because of how important it is to the safety when you're operating your tractor. So you can see on this tractor, it does have a front end loader. So a lot of times these tractors are used for loader work, whether it be moving dirt, moving hay bales, whatever your application may be. Also these tractors are used for a lot of rear implements such as land levelers, box blades, tillers. So more weight means more stability when doing loader work and more weight also means more power to the ground whenever you're using rear implements. So right here before we weigh, one thing we're going to check on this tractor is to see if it has fluid in the rear tires. This is a recently traded in uh, Kubota. So we, we're not sure what the tires hold, but we're going to check that because that will make a big difference in weight. So these tires will be filled with a mixture. Uh, a lot of times it's water and methanol or various other things. So what we'll do here is we'll take the cap off and I can see right there on my hands that it's sticky. It's kind of a darker color. So that's a pretty good indicator already that they're going to have fluid in them. We'll take this cap off here and we'll kind of back out of the way because this stuff gets pretty nasty and we'll pop. Yep. See that guys? There is a fluid mixture in these tires. So with this tire being a, let's see, it is a 16.9 by 30, as you can see right here. Generally, these tires hold about 73 gallons of fluid, and that calculates to about 609, 610 pounds of tire. So when we go to weigh this machine, we're going to deduct about 1,200 pounds to get the true weight just of the tractor and loader. Stick with me here and we'll pull it on. All right, so with me out of the cab, we know that there's the fluid in the tires. We come over here to the scales. We see it's about 8,900. Oh, we're changing a little. Say 8,900. So we deduct the 1,200 pounds, makes it about 7,700 pounds. So from here, we'll pull on the John Deere and we'll go through the same thing. We'll check the tires. We'll see how much we weigh there. Okay guys, now we're here with the John Deere 5065E. This is John Deere's 65 horse utility tractor. Very like model as to what you just saw in the Kubota. As you can see it does have the front end loader uh, used for all the same application. The loader works such as moving dirt, hay bales, things of that sort along with the rear implements. So before we weigh this, we're going to go back here and check the rear tires, see if they're filled with fluid or air. Now on this model, the wheel is flipped around, so the valve stem is back behind. So I'm going to reach back. I'm going to take the valve stem cap off. I'm going to turn it over and poke it down on the valve stem. Now, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but air is definitely coming out of this tire. No fluid. As you can see, nothing's leaking out. So I'm going to put the cap back on. We'll pull it on so we can see if we can get our true weight. All right, so I'll get off the tractor here and get off the scales. Let's we'll see what this weight reads. Now, without me in the cab, the tractor has air in the tires, weighing about 8320. After the deduction of the 1,200 pounds for the fluid in the tires, we are at about 7,700 pounds on the Kubota. Now, that Kubota is also six horsepower bigger than this tractor, um, but as you can see, it weighs about 600 pounds less. So if you guys will stick with me here, we're going to pull them around, do the comparison. And as we go, I'll show you some of the places where that weight comes into play. Okay, guys, we're going to start here at the rear of the tractor for this comparison. We're going to start here because 
I'm gonna show you some things at the rear end that help with that weight differential. You know, we've shown where the deer shows to be, weighs to be 600 pounds heavier than the Kubota. So we're gonna start back here to show you some of that weight. Like I said, with this being a mid-sized utility tractor, you know, it's not a huge machine, but it is kind of a mid-level machine. 600 pounds is a lot of weight. Makes a lot of difference in your ballast when you're doing loader work. Makes a lot of difference in your power at the rear when you're talking power to the ground, pulling certain implements. Uh, so we'll start back here to show you a couple of those things. One of them is going to be, if we look here at the rear axles, on the deer we've got the square heavy uh, rear axle cast that go, the square heaviness goes almost all the way out to the wheel. So you can see the size stays pretty consistent um, from your differential all the way out. And if we go across here, you can see that they match. They're identical on both sides. Um, that makes up for some of the weight difference. And I'll show you that on the Kubota where it differs. If we go over to the Kubota, a little different setup here. As we go out, we're starting with the square heavy cast and we go out and we get smaller and smaller. So you do lose some weight there. This is different over here where the cab suspension is on this Kubota. So you're not losing all your weight here, but you do lose some by not being consistent all the way out on the axle. Other than that there, um, this model is very comparable to the deer. You do have, of course, your three-point arms and your PTO for all your rear implement work. This model has two sets of couplers, um, whereas our deer over here only has one, which I'll show you that. Um, we also have your SMV symbol, which is very important in these tractors when you're moving them from place to place. They also have their windshield washer fluid tank uh, on the back here. One thing that I don't like about this model is that this sign does cut out some of your visibility when you're backing up to hook up those rear implements. If we come back across here to the deer, as you can see on the rear here, this is all open. Um, nothing in your way here to see when you're hooking up your implement to your rear three-point. Uh, here's the one standard set of couplers we have. Also your uh, windshield washer fluid tank here and your SMV symbol. So overall, very, very similar on the rears. Uh, so if you'll stick with me, we'll go over here to the driver's side and start there. All right, now starting here on the driver's side, um, again, these tractors are going to be very comparable. We'll start here with the diesel tank right here by the step. It will be the same over on the Kubota model, as I'll show you that in a minute. Um, on this model, we do have the 520M loader. It is a quick parking loader. So you have a locking hinge here that you would unlock pulling this back and sliding down once you were to release the pressure off of the loader. Pull this back, push down on the handle. Next thing you would do is you would lower these parking stands. Now, as you can see, if you come around here and you see how wide these parking stands are, this is very important for when you're taking this loader off, whether it be on the grass or on the dirt, the wider the footprint, the less likely that loader is to sink down, which is important if you're gonna be in applications where you're taking the loader on and off. Uh, another thing about this loader that it has here is the toolbox. Uh, very easy to get to when you can open it all the way up, take these pins out, put your pins in here um, for storage when you're going on. Now, as we go on down um, here to the front, we'll look at the hood here. It has this easy latch to pull here, and then just a simple raise here allows the hood to raise all the way up. Um, as you notice, we do have the hood guard that comes with the loader set up, but the hood raised up without having to do anything with this hood guard because it's a fixed guard. On the Kubota, and I'll show you in a minute, we'll have to actually uh, release the hood guard and let it back so we can open the hood. Uh, a couple, one thing I do want to point out while we're in here is you do have an easy clean out screen right here. Um, this pulls out so you can clean it. I mean, as we know, this is very important when you're working in dusty and dirty conditions to keep this clean, to keep your machine um, clean so you're not overheating. So we do have the pull-out screens here. They're easy to get to because this is entirely open when we open the hood. So I'll close this hood back down here. One other thing I want to point about, out about the John Deere hood is that it is not metal. It is a hard poly or plastic. Um, to some customers, plastic is very is a very negative feature, but guys, plastics have come a long way from what they used to be. It's a very durable material. If you have any type of bucket spill when you're using your loader, this won't dent, it won't, paint won't peel off. It is that color all the way through, so you don't ever have to deal with rust or dents, and it's easily replaceable. So next we'll move down here real quick and look at how the quick, uh, quick attach bucket mounts up. 
You do have this uh, quick coupler here where the loader slides in and a pin on this side. This will be a John Deere 500 series hookup. It is proprietary to this loader to keep you in the right size of implements to fit this machine. So we'll make our way around here to the front and we'll go look at the Kubota on this side as well. Starting here on the Kubota, we'll kind of work our way in reverse order. Here on the front of this machine is a skid steer style hookup. Now you have two levers here that you would push down uh, to release and pull up to engage them. That allows this machine to be very versatile. Any type of machine that has a skid steer style hookup, this will fit on, which is a very great feature. Makes this tractor very versatile. But the one thing you get into is you could get into implements that are too big and too heavy. So be very careful of that. Um, so we work our way back here. We'll look at the hood. So on these models, as you can hear that, a little different sound. Kubota really pushes their metal hoods, sturdy, um, durable, but at the same time, if you were to have that overspill, you would dent the hood, you could scratch it and peel paint off, we're talking rust, all of those things. So even though they push that feature, uh, it could be great or it could have a negative effect depending on your, your situation. So when I go to open that hood, Right down here, this pin, if you didn't really know where it was, you and you might not have an idea of what it is, but this is the, the hood latch. So I'm gonna pull it, and as you raise up, you can see there that it stops. So now we have to close the hood back down and release that hood, that hood guard. Have a pin here on the front, pull that forward, and now we can release the hood and allow it to raise all the way up. Now, very similar looking, except one major difference is the battery here is on the front of this machine. I'll show you on the deer later where it's located. But this battery is located here. Okay, and, and generally easy to get to, but you would either have to have the loader removed or the loader all the way up to get to this, whereas the deer is in a different spot to make that easier. Also, as you can see, when we come around here to the side, we have those screens on the deer. You have one here. Not easy to get to, it's on a hook system. I don't know if you can see past my finger. There's a hook system there. You have to get that off and pull it out to clean it and then work it back in there and hang it back up instead of just the easy slide out system like the deer has. So if you're not careful and get that clean, we could be talking some overheating pretty easily there. So, so pay attention to that on this machine. So we'll close the hood back down. We'll Raise back up our uh, hood guard there. We'll make our way back. Now, this is also a quick parking loader. In my, in my mind, it is not as quick as this pin system here. Once you release the lever, uh, not as easy to hold on to. You don't have the full handle. Uh, this can be frustrating as it falls back down through, but you would pull this out, slide it in here for storage, and then, of course, lower your feet. Now, I pointed out the width of the feet on the John Deere. As you can see here, we're less than half on the width here. So if you're in any type of soft ground and you set this thing off, there's a good chance this thing is going to act as a spear and dig into the ground. And then now your loader is lower than what it needs to be for you to hook back up, which could make it difficult when reinstalling your loader. The other thing that we don't see here that we saw on the deer is the toolbox. And that is because they install their toolbox down here. Um, it's an okay spot, except for whenever you open it and you have a loader installed, you cannot open it all the way. Uh, makes it you, know, you can't use it for everything you might want to. And also being so low, have any low lying brush or debris, could beat that thing up, tear it off, uh, many different things there. So here, like I said, very comparably you have your steps in your diesel tank or diesel fill here. Um, one other thing that's on this side that's different from the deer is you do have this corner post exhaust, which is actually in your line of sight when you're in the cab. If we look over here to the deers, it is actually further out and it's on your opposite side. Whereas when you're in the cab and you look out, which I'll show in a minute, you actually can't hardly see this when you're looking to the side as it is covered by this corner post. So as you can see here, it is in your line of sight when looking over to your left. Um, so that, that is, that's another issue for some people. From here, guys, we'll work our way around to the passenger side. All right, so now here we are on the passenger side of the tractor. Uh, we, first thing I'm going to point out, if we look down here, our, power, our, our steering arms here are in the front of the axle, um, which is kind of a concern. And you can see that Kubota has noticed that as they've put a guard over the front of this. You know, whenever you're going through the field, different debris, 
um, things like that hitting this can cause wear and tear so as I'll show you later on on the deer the deer is actually behind the axle here for more protection while we're back here also I'm going to point out as you can see this housing back here this is Kubota's four-wheel drive system this is called a bull gear so what it has is it has one big drive gear or one little drive gear at the top and a big drive gear all the way around so two gears run the four-wheel drive on this tractor whereas on a deer it runs on a planetary system of three interlocking gears that sit like this in here that run together and i'll show you a little more of that when we get to that side um, another thing on this side as you can notice the hydraulic hookups for the loader are not easily accessible you have to get back here to undo your couplers which are in a great you know it's not in a great spot not easy not user friendly back here uh, but still accessible um, one thing that i didn't point out on the other side but as you notice here if you came up as an inexperienced operator generally to show how this loader unhooks you would have some sort of instruction which there is not on this side nor on the other Whereas on the deer, there is an instruction panel to show you how to unlock this loader. So I'll show you that also. Um, but still, like I had pointed out before, a, a generally easy system as long as you know what you're looking for. Um, this does have a, a dual entrance. Um, not a very functional entrance for where you're at, but if you were in an upset or overturned situation and needed to exit the machine quickly, or if there was something blocking your side there, this is a great feature also on the Kubota. So we'll walk around here now and I'll show you deer's side of the tractor there. So as we come around, we notice when we're looking here at the front axle, first thing we notice is that the, the steering arms are not out front. They are back behind. This serves as protection without having to add that guard that Kubota had to add. Um, also, as you look up just above here, you can see the serial number is very easily displayed. Um, if you were standing back away from the tractor here, you can visibly see it. Um, very easily whereas on the Kubota as I turn here and I look I don't see it and as I back up I start to see some of it but it is tucked back up and under in generally the same spot but farther under and harder to see but these are very important as you'll need to know your serial numbers for various different things as I pointed out before the drive systems on the front as you can see here we have this huge hub right here with you can see these three uh, these three pieces here that is actually what holds in the gears the three gears that drive this motor all three the same size all three getting the same torque whereas over here you have one drive gear about this size and a big gear here that's driving all all by its own on that one little gear uh, the next thing we'll point out is the hydraulic couplers right here on the outside very easily accessible we're not having to reach around and grab um, so you do have them here easily accessible to change when you're removing this loader. Deer is also set up for the uh, passenger side door. They don't come standard with a handle on them, but you can add that feature um, for safety if that's something you wish to add. Uh, the last thing I'll point out on this side is right down here below this, uh, this window here is the battery box. So as I pointed out on the Kubota, the battery box is underneath or underneath the hood, whereas this one is right here easily accessible we do not have to raise the hood move the loader any of that you can get to the battery right here on the side um, that's another ease of use and another customer uh, customer feature that we've added two pins and you're closed back up so from here guys i've pretty much shown you the whole outside of these tractors let's move into the cabs okay guys starting here in the john deere cab uh, i'm going to start this thing up Okay, so as we look here, we do have the interactive um, screen display here, your RPM meter, fuel meter, and of course your temperature meter, and also you have various different uh, lights that will light up here depending on function. You do have your information center here. Uh, right now it's displaying hours. That will also display different messages um, as you go on. Uh, general layout of the cab, um, of course, everything is uh, color coded. So keep that in mind. We have yellow here, or I mean orange here, which has to do with the transmission. If we look on over to this side, we have orange here for our range selector, and orange here for our gear selector, and then also orange here for our throttle. Now, we can throttle down. We also have orange on the floor for a foot throttle. This is good for applications such as loader work, um, so you're not having to reach off of the loader onto your throttle here. You can just use your foot 
from there. Um, here, of course, we do have our um, steering wheel tilt, which is a nice comfort feature for the operator. You have your light switch here. You have your, also you have a light selector here for your hazards or your lights as well. Uh, looking on over here, we have our windshield wiper setting. We also have our regen setting. So this tractor is final tier four, so it has the exhaust cleaning system on it. Uh, you'll want to leave this in auto almost all of the time unless it tells you to do a parked region, uh, but you should leave it in auto most of the time. Look on over here to the right, we do have our loader joystick. Of course, it is a four, four way functioning up for raise, down for lower, side to side for our bucket tilt. As we work our way on back, we've shown you, of course, your range selector and your gear selector and also your throttle. But on behind it is your PTO. Uh, this will turn on your rear PTO. Now, you see yellow here and yellow nowhere else, except if you look behind me, you do have yellow again right back here. This tractor is set up with a 540 and 540E PTO. That 540E allows you to run your PTO at a lesser RPM using less fuel. Um, so those two correspond as they're both to the PTO. Here, as we move down, you've got your three-point selector, your down force selector, and then your one rear hydraulic uh, open and close here. So overall, generally this cab is very ergonomic. Everything is to where I can get to it very easily without having to reach, without having to reach up or out. Uh, John Deere focuses on making things very comfortable. I'll turn that off here so we can hear a little better. Tries to make everything very comfortable for the for the customer. So as far as everything you're going to work with in this tractor daily, everything's easy to reach. A couple other the features that we'll point out is does come standard, of course, with the heating and air system with six air vents, three on this side, three on on this other side. And one thing that Deer really pushes, as opposed to uh, some of the competitors, is our vents are above you, where you can have them all pointing at you, uh, making you as comfortable as you need to be. Um, without anything blocking them. Some other models, which I'll show you on the Kubota, have them say in the steering column or down low where things could be blocking it and you're not getting um, cooled off fast enough where ours are up in the cab. Also, you have a spot here for the radio. It does not come standard from the factory, but you can add whatever type of radio you would like. Um, and of course, then we have our rear view mirror here in the cab. So that's a quick overview of the cab. Now we'll move on over to the Kubota. All right, guys, lastly, we're here in the cab of the Kubota. Um, very similar to the deer, some differences. I'll start it up so we can show you the display. Now, as I show you the display, it has all the same things. Of course, we do have our RPM gauge. We have our information center here. We have our fuel gauge and our heat gauge along with some of the buttons. Um, so very similar there. You have your, you can change on these tractors between miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Um, this will show you your PTO range or your hours, depending on what button you select there. You have a horn here on the front. You also have your hazards button to the right to the right of it. Um, all these buttons here, these have to do, of course, with your. This is a final tier four tractor, also. So as far as your cleaning system on your exhaust, you have those here and your RPM here. Um, while we're down here and we're looking, I'm just gonna go ahead and point out the vents. This is what I was talking about. Your air conditioner vents are here on the um, on the column, which are okay. You're still gonna get, obviously they're all pointed towards you and you're gonna get that air, but you know there could be things blocking them. You've gotta get these turned right. They're starting from the bottom, whereas your, all your hot air is up here. Whereas with deer, they're blowing right from the top, getting that hot air away from you as quick as possible. Um, I'll go ahead and turn this off so we can hear. So from here, uh, a little bit of the difference is, is the other one we had a range selector of three ranges and then four gears over here. And this one we have four ranges and two or two ranges here and four gears. So this is only an eight, eight forward, eight reverse. That would be a 12 forward, 12 reverse. So the 12 and 12 is an option on the Kubota. Um, it's also an option over there, whereas we also have a nine, three, a nine forward, three reverse. Um, so here, of course, would be your gears and your ranges. Your throttle is down here, but you also have a foot throttle. But if you didn't know any better, maybe you didn't know what that was because it's not color-coded with the other transmission um, items. Other than this one here, Kubota does a good job of color-coding, as you can see these. And then also your reverser here is also orange. They don't have any type of uh, labeling on this, on this joystick here. 
uh, experienced tractor operators would know obviously that this is your um, joystick for your loader but there's no indication so if you were inexperienced you may not know but this is your loader joystick now it's a four function and I know that from running it but if I didn't know I could also look outside the cab out on the loader frame there is a sticker out there that shows you uh, what the functions are for this loader another thing there if you didn't know if you were an experienced operator and you didn't know where to look for that may be an inconvenient spot whereas deers is located on the column there uh, as we work our way back you do have your rear hydraulic outlets right here this one has two so we have two levers uh, for open and close as we reach back kind of in an awkward spot here you have your raise and lower for the three-point arms of course and then your other DT, your other one here for your force uh, yellow again for PTO so they've color coded here same thing if we look back um, not here but here is going to be your four wheel your four wheel drive which I didn't point out on the deer but same thing it has a pull up lever um, generally the selector would be behind me on this model it doesn't have it so it just has the one setting uh, for your PTO here um, or as I pointed out before our windshield washer applications on the deer were here on the column here they're not here they are back here on the side along with your lights are also not here on your column but they're on the side here too uh, as we go up we do have of course the standard air conditioning unit and this one does have a radio installed uh, generally this cab is is very very similar to the deer um, except for some of the things that the, the missing labeling for an inexperienced operator may be difficult uh, overall very very similar um, we'll hop out here and go over a couple more things so stick with us all right guys last thing we're going to point out here is just basically an overall comparison of length so we start here at the rear you can see that these two tractors are lined up so we'll work our way towards the front here as you can look through the cabs and see they're lined up all the way here to the front and as we get here we see that the Kubota is oh about a foot about a foot shorter which pro to that be more maneuverability um, getting in and out of those pins getting around those corners then also you get here to the deer that's about a foot longer the 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 good about that is going to be your reach so say you're needing to load that dirt you're picking up a load of dirt and you need to put it in the back of that pickup or into that trailer you don't have to get as close to that pickup or trailer to dump that dirt or if you need to load something say on the back of a trailer you got more reach to get that heavy load up towards the middle of those axles so both of them good design um, going to be great for whatever function that you've got but you do have a difference there so in closing here guys i hope that you've seen some things that you need to see or wanted to see um, one of the things that i'd point out again is that that weight difference you know we were doing a competitive comparison here and the first thing we did is the weight because of how important it is in these little machines you've got these front end loaders you're going to be using them a lot of the time your rear implements you'll be using those more weight more stability more power to the ground um, the other thing that i hope you really caught on to is just the customer um, ease of use the ergonomics of of the John Deere maybe versus the Kubota for instance how the hydraulic couplers here on the outside of the loader bracket instead of the inside and how the battery is easily accessible here on the outside instead of under the hood um, in in where the loader is in the way on the Kubota um, and and lastly guys one thing I didn't hit on is is resale um, on these two machines you the the difference a lot of the time initially is going to be of course that the that the Kubota is less than the deer everyone knows about that everyone talks about that but the one thing they don't talk about is when you get ready to get rid of these machines are you ready to move on to bigger and better things or to downsize the money that you're going to get out of this John Deere machine is going to highly outweigh what you're going to get in the Kubota and in the end game may make up that difference of that initial gap so guys um, overall i hope you liked what you've seen we'd love to hear from you please comment whether it be good bad or indifferent and uh, please subscribe to our channel stick around for more videos see you next time